Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Dentistry Made Easy. The topic for today is preventive lesion restoration from a preventive dentistry. As we know, we say prevention is better than cure. So this is also a technique in which we are preventing. So this is amongst the newer techniques which show long lasting success. So this treatment, it has various advantages over the traditional amalgam restoration. So, for example, now the ca with cavity. So, the carious lesion now you can see over here is so small. But now in amalgam, what you do is you require that proper retention, resistance, convenience form. And because of that, you create such an extensive cavity for your amalgam. So, to overcome that and to prevent such extensive preparation, we are using this preventive resin restoration technique in which we are focusing only on this curious lesion and not whole of the tooth and we are not like hampering the sound tooth structure we are not destructing or we are not removing the sound tooth structure we are just removing this curious lesion in this preventive resin restoration so it requires excellent isolation of moisture and saliva contamination because now this is a resin restoration and as we know if there is contamination of saliva with the tooth which is restored with a composite or a resin, it may lead to lower bond strength between the composite resin and the tooth. So basically it's like your adaptation of the composite, it will be less. So it will not get adapted properly to the tooth surface. This was the introduction. Now what exactly it is? So it utilizes invasive and non-invasive treatment of the borderline or questionable caries. So if there is this borderline, so this is a borderline type of caries. So this is an incipient caries where the caries lesion has just started. So this is a borderline caries or questionable. So there are some caries lesion which are questionable. So this can be done. So if there are caries of borderline or questionable, so it can be treated with preventive resin restoration. And it utilizes both invasive and non-invasive depending upon the extent of the caries. The reason it is placed in the carious lesion and the adjacent carious susceptible areas, they are sealed with the sealant. So the, now over here, as you can see, this is a carious lesion and these are your deep pits and fissure. So basically another preventive treatment or technique that we do in dentistry is pit and fissure sealant. So it's like when we have deep pits and fissure so at that time what we do is we apply this pits and fissure sealant to prevent the occurrence of the caries so now this pits and fissure they are deep and here is a small carious lesion incipient carious lesion so what we do is we place a resin over it and the rest tooth it is sealed with a sealant so the resin it is placed in the carious area and the adjacent carious susceptible areas so these are carious susceptible because if your pits and fissure they are deep it will lead to the food accumulation over there and it is not tensible properly so it can lead to carious lesions so to and what we do so to prevent that we are applying sealant over it and it which is provide and it provides valuable treatment and it is alternative to amalgam restorations as we have seen now to treat this carious lesion such small carious lesion so what we do in amalgam we create such extensive we prepare such extensive cavity preparation so to prevent that or to overcome it we are using prr and they are known as a natural extension of the use of occlusal sealants so it's like we are using occlusal sealants but there is a small carious lesion and we are just doing the extension of it they are the conservative answer to the conventional extension for preparation. So in amalgam, what we do is we are extending the cavity for the preparation so that we get proper retention and resistance form. And PRR, it is a conservative answer to that. So it integrates the preventive approach. So it is a preventive approach of the sealant therapy for carious susceptible pits and fissure with, so it is a preventive approach for carious susceptible pit and fissure with therapeutic restoration of the incipient caries so we are using composite resins in this 
over here now so if there are deep pits and fissure on the tooth surface so in this case if there are pit, so if there are deep pits and fissure so you only do the sealant therapy you just apply this sealant on the pits and fissure but now if the caries is present in one area or a part of a pit and fissure so now over here there is a caries which is present on one area so at that time what you do is that particular caries it is restored and the remaining pits and fissure they are protected with sealant and this is known as your preventive resin restoration so what you have done is you have restored your pits so that caries lesion and the rest of your seal the rest of your pits and fissure they are restored or they are sealed with the pits and fissure sealant Now, what are the types of preventive resin restoration? Depending upon the extent and the depth of the caries lesion, they are of three types. That is type A, type B, and type C. So, type A is when the pits and fissure they are susceptible to caries. So, and the pits and fissure, so there is suspicious pits and fissure where caries removal is limited to enamel. So now over here, as you can see, now the caries it is limited to the enamel so this is enamel dentin and pulp so the caries lesion it is limited to the enamel so over here there is no need of local anesthesia and a slow speed 1 by 4 or 1 by 2 round burr it is used to remove the decalcified enamel so we are using a round burr the size of half or quarter and we are using this to remove the caries or the decalcified enamel and over here what we do is we seal it with a sealant alone or that is unfilled resin or sealant is applied so here as you can see so we are applying the sealant on this only the fissure sealant is applied in type a because there is caries which is limited to enamel so type b is incipient lesion in dentin that is small and confined now in type b it is like the caries it has entered the dentin but now it is incipient and it is small and confined. So over here, now the caries, it has entered dentine. So over here again, there is no need of local anesthesia. Now in this case, there is a use of appropriate base, which is placed in the areas of dentine exposure. Now wherever there is this dentine exposure, so now in this, there is dentine exposure over here. So at that point, we are using a base, appropriate base. Now in this diagram, what we are using is calcium hydroxide as a liner. So basically what exactly the liner and bases do, they just protect the pulp by providing thermal insulation. So it's like we are protecting the pulp and because of that we use appropriate base. And after that what we do is we use a composite resin. It is placed over it. So first we use a base, appropriate base. Then we are using a composite resin. And then the remaining pits and fissure they are covered with the sealants. And it is prepared by this size 2 round burr. Type C. So it is more extensive dentinal involvement and it requires restoration with posterior composite material. Posterior composite material is filled composite material. Now in this, the caries, it has got deeper and it is a more extensive form of the caries lesion. So it is more extensive dentin involvement. Again, we are using the appropriate base over the dentin. Then we are using a posterior composite resin over it. And the rest area, like the rest pits and fissure, they are covered with a sealant. Now over here, there is the use of local anesthesia. So over here, local anesthesia is required because this caries, it is more extensive. So the patient, they may suffer from pain. So it is like over here we need local anesthesia and a larger size burr it is used in type C. So these are all the three types of preventive resin restoration. So first one was it is confined to the enamel. Second was incipient lesion in dentin and type C is it is more extensive involvement in dentin. What are the advantages of it? So there is minimal cavity preparation as we are preparing the cavity minimally. So it prevents the unnecessary removal of the healthy tooth structure for retention. It's like now for amalgam to get proper retention, we prepare a cavity like the conventional cavity preparation is extensive as prepared to as compared where we're comparing it to an incipient cavious lesion.
so the cavity prepared is extensive so it prevents now this preventive resin restoration it prevents this unnecessary removal of the healthy tooth structure now it seals the caries because of that there is halting of the destruction of the tooth so it now it seals the caries and there can be this halting of the destruction so we are not even destructing the tooth as we are doing in amalgam for a small lesion if there is a small lesion we are preparing a very big cavity as compared to it so we are like preventing it in preventive resin restoration and it also seals the remaining part of the tooth with sealant which is more susceptible to caries so now this is like the comparison this is a conventional restoration which is leading to complete tooth loss so if there are caries which are present this is class 1 if there is one more surface which is included or there is another caries which is like present on other part so we are using so we are making class 2 this is mod this is only so it's like we are preparing this cavity and because of that what happens is it leads to complete tooth loss but now what happens in prr so there is this minimal tooth loss whatever the case is so we are just you so we are just removing that part of the caries and we are filling it or we are restoring it that part of the caries with restorative material and the rest is covered or it is sealed with the pits and pressure sealant so over here as you can see now in all cases now it's like in every case there is caries involvement in one or other pits and pressure so over here as you can see there was this involvement over here there is no involvement of this pressure so it's like it depends upon it but there is minimal tooth loss so we are not exactly extensively preparing the cavity over here in prr so this is the difference between the conventional and the prr over here there is complete tooth loss and there is minimal tooth loss in prr but the only precaution you need to take in prr is there can be early loss of prr which is similar to pits and fissure sealants so pits and fissure sealants they can also be lost easily if it is not like etched properly of or if there is contamination so it is very important to maintain excellent isolation for moisture contamination so this is the only point that you need to remember in prr like the main precaution that you need to do. this was it of this video thank you so much